And I think that's where some post trippers get hung up. It's almost like for us, we get caught up in the air to meet him and to be with all those that have passed. Mm -hmm. uh, but post trippers are like, it's like a U-turn. It's like we go up and we do a procession. We guide him back down, but we don't go to heaven. Like they don't want to talk about the idea that there's actually people on white horses coming behind Christ, which is part of his armies and us as well, coming behind Jesus Christ to earth. They skip that part for some reason. They say, no, no, no. We're going up in the air to meet him and come back down real quick. No, that real doesn't quick. Make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Here's, here's a problem with that. We are born again sealed unto the day of redemption or for the day of redemption, for the purpose of the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you're saying is you can never lose your salvation because that would mean that the spirit of God would have to die. Mm -hmm. No part of Jesus goes to hell. All right. No mm -hmm. part of the Holy Spirit dies. Okay. Yeah. We have been quickened. We have been brought back to life spiritually. Jesus is a quickening spirit. So yeah. for someone to lose their salvation... That would mean, that would be a perfect example. For my kids to no longer be my kids, yeah. my DNA would have to be extracted from them. Essentially, they have to die. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. that's impossible to do. Okay. Yeah. That can never happen. Yeah. So, same with us. Okay. So, when you say that we are joint heirs of Christ and it's going to be forever, of course yeah. it'll be forever because the Holy Spirit in us will never die. And yeah. the purpose of what God is doing right now is to regenerate us. Okay. The first part of the gift of salvation is regeneration of your spirit. The second part of the gift of salvation is regeneration of your body. And it's a perfect plan what God did. God did it this way because he knows like our lifespan is only about 80 years, give or take. Okay. Yep. And he says, well, this thing's going to last for 2000 years. So how do I give everybody the same gift? Well, mm -hmm. I'll spiritually seal them off for now. So that mm -hmm. way, when their body dies, their physical avatar dies, okay, yeah. their spirits stay with me, okay, and they live on with me in heaven. And then once the end of the age of grace comes, then I will resurrect their, all their bodies. They'll get their bodies. And, and those who are left over on the earth who are still going through the same process they did, I'll just change them right there. They won't have to die. And then I can close out the age of grace. Yeah. Real easy to understand. Once again, this is why we have to have a pre-tribulation rapture. Yeah. Because our gospel is contrary to the gospel that the 12 apostles were preaching. Yeah. Okay, it's a different gospel. Yeah. Okay, if you go to Galatians uh, 2 verse 7, you will see that there were actually two different gospels taking place. Paul says, but contrawise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as a gospel, the circumcision was unto Peter, yep. for he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Yep. Okay. So they <clears throat> knew that their gospels were different, and yep. one was mighty to the Jews, one was mighty to the Gentiles. Yep. Peter's was mighty to the Jews. Paul's yep. was mighty to the Gentiles. Peter's yep. was purposed for the Jews. Yep. But God has a purpose for the Jews. Yep. Just like God has a purpose for us, the yep. body of Christ. And people get hung up in that stuff. Who's better? Yeah. Israel, Jews, or the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. We're not better. We're just different. It's just like you have the Navy and you have the Army. Two great organizations. Navy. Purposes. Navy is better. Maybe no, I don't know. And stuff. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like the body of Christ, for example, I would rather be me personally. I'd rather be a part of the body of Christ. Right. Because the way I understand it, we have heavenly inheritance and earthly inheritance. So we're able to go back and forth tuned from heaven. Yep. Jews are terrestrial, where Paul talks about the celestial and the terrestrial bodies. It's yep. a good point. They are, they, they are going to be very much stuck here on the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, while well, we go to different planets, we go to the third heavens. I don't want to be stuck here just on the earth, just between me yeah. and you. Yeah. Some people yeah. might like it here, but those yeah. who of us who are in the body of Christ right now, 
We yeah. are receiving a heavenly inheritance, with, which also allows us to come back yeah. here to the earth as well. I'd much yeah. rather have that. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I agree. It's interesting that if you talk to a Jew today, they focus on earth and the land and everything. And they look at Christians like we're crazy because we don't care about the land. We're yeah. like, okay, have it. That's that's fine. We're, we don't need a piece of land. But what Jesus Christ is doing is he's also restoring heaven, not just earth, but he's restoring heaven. And one day there's a third of the angels that's going to get kicked out of heaven as well. They're mm -hmm. going to get toast and they're going to lose their, their state, their seat, if you will. They won't be able to go back. They Once that's over, they're done. They come down to earth and those that are dwelling in heaven basically say, woe to the inhabitants of earth. Woe to those that dwell on earth because now the devil knows his time is short. He can't go back anymore. He lost that first estate done. So that's coming down the pipes as well. And you're right. Like we we get something that is very special that basically was kept secret from Jesus Christ in his bosom hidden mm -hmm. because if Satan knew what he was up to he might not have crucified Jesus on the cross he might have not orchestrated all the puppets the religious leaders the romans everything to say if i can take care of this person all is mine I don't think he was able to calculate that once Jesus Christ died on the cross and he was the perfect sacrifice that he can now dish out gifts to everybody because his name is now above all names. Not that mm -hmm. it wasn't before, but this was a secret that was created before the foundation of the world. Before, right. the, before the angels, before the devil was created, here's the master plan. I'm going to hold this secret until I die on the cross and then Paul comes along. I'm going to download all of this stuff into him and he's writing it all out or having, because maybe his eyesight is bad. He's having Timothy, he's having everybody writing everything down. And then it's like, okay, hey, I can now depart. I'm free to go. Now you guys have all the tools. You have everything you need. You have the Holy spirit. You have the scriptures complete. I'm out of here. Cause it's better to be with Christ than to be here, to be absent from the body is better. And to be with the Lord is better. But he was torn between two places. Like, I gotta, I still gotta be here for you guys. So once that's all done, I'm booking my next flight out of here. I'm departing. Right. Exactly. Good. Jesus had a three and a half year earthly ministry, which was tailor made specific for Israel, an earthly civilization. Then he goes to heaven, and then some time passes. Then he comes from heaven and then appears to Apostle Paul from the heavenlies to lead him now to the new gospel. And the Bible talks about Paul said, I once knew a man, went to the third heavens 14 years ago, whether he knew it was in the spirit or not, I don't know. But the thing is, Jesus caught him up to the heavens to show him yep. what was to come for those who are going to be saved under the heavenly uh, age of grace gospel, which Apostle Paul is chief under. Apostle Paul's chief under the age of grace gospel, Apostle Peter is essentially the chief under the kingdom gospel. Yeah. Okay. So basically what happens is Jesus had a three and a half year ministry teaching about what's going to be based on the earth for those who are going to be earthly, which will be Israel. And mm -hmm. then us who are the body of Christ, he takes our representative, our chief person in the gospel of grace, Paul, he takes yeah. him to heaven. Yeah. And shows them this is what's going to be going on. This is how you're going to get here. This is how th this is how you're all going to be saved and brought here. He didn't show them that stuff here on earth. He yeah. took them to heaven and showed that. Why? Yeah. Because we are a heavenly civilization. Yeah, that's why he did it. It's and if you go to Ephesians uh, one verses three through five, it says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places." In Christ, the body of Christ, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that yep. should we be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto yep. the adoption of children, not yep. just, you know, all the Jews that were born through the seed of Abraham, we were adopted in. One well, nice yep. thing about being adopted is you are chosen. No, you have somebody that comes and adopts you. They choose you. Not You weren't just born 
to them against their will. It's like you, you get what you get. Whatever whatever is born to you is what you get. But here we are adopted. We are chosen. Yeah, that's the big that's deal. Good. And yeah. it's an adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. So heavenly places, we are meant to be a heavenly civilizations with also rights to come here to the earth. Yep. Okay. So That's I know some people might love the earth and won't come back here. I know the city of Jerusalem is going to be here eventually in the new earth. Yes, yep. you'll come here. You have a place in there as well. Yep. Me, I like to have a place in heavenly Jerusalem. And then I want a place up in the third heavens. Then I want to place somewhere in the drama the galaxy. I want to go all, I want to have <laughs> real estate everywhere. I hear you. <laughs> Family, it's obvious that we are right now in the final hours before the rapture resurrection and we are pulling in the final people into the lifeboat, the ark of Jesus Christ, before the trumpet sounds. And if you've been wanting to get out there to make a difference but you did not know how, you don't know where to start, don't have the resources, don't have the connections, or if you're like most people, you just don't have the time. Life sets in, family, friends, children, your job, your career, and everything else. But you still want to build up your stockpile of gold, silver, and precious stones for the construction of your crown at the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.10 states, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, what is the good work that he's referring to here? One of them is leading people to salvation in Jesus Christ. Probably the most important one. And what's the bad work? Bad work is not doing anything or investing all your seed into a building fund or any other ministry that is not fruitful. Now family, there is still time left for you to make an incredible impact in God's kingdom. There is still time left and there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. And unfortunately, it is still true today as Jesus said in Matthew 9 27 that the harvest is great but the laborers are few. We are commanded to occupy until his return to be about our Heavenly Father's business. Jesus Christ did not call us to be churchgoers and go into these buildings. Jesus Christ did not call us to be spectators in his kingdom. He has called us to make an impact in his kingdom while we walk the earth for a very short period of time. The whole narrative of giving up everything in this life so you can have an incredible eternity. Jesus told us in Matthew 16, 25, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. This means being a good soldier for Christ for the short time you're here on the earth so that way you can be a fully fulfilled human being in heaven for eternity. Folks, you only get one life. You only get one time around to build up riches in heaven that will last you for eternity. And if you have not done that much in your life or you're looking to finish strong, Feed My Sheep Today is the vineyard you want to work in. We are a faith-based nonprofit that funds Christian missions all over the world. And we are doing this through our missionaries who are sharing the gospel of grace, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. The hope and love of Jesus Christ finished works at the cross for our salvation. And through this work, they are leading scores and scores of people to salvation in Jesus Christ. And they're accomplishing this by preaching the word verbally and also by video presentation. Many people watch these video presentations of the life of Jesus Christ and him dying on the cross and much more. And they immediately come to the faith of believing in the finished works of Jesus Christ for their salvation. This is a very effective tool. And after this is all done, we provide free Bibles to all those who are new believers that joined the body of Christ. And on top of all that, we are also providing these people with humanitarian relief aid to help ease their suffering situation. And you will receive the same reward as our missionaries because now you are partnered with them through Feed My Sheep today every time you give. Because in 1 Corinthians 3 8 it says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. So you can be the missionary or you can be the financial arm that supports the missionary when you invest in the Feed My Sheep today. 
in the description box below there's a link to our website it's feedmysheeptoday.org go there you can give by credit card paypal bank draft or simply send your gift in the mail you also see the option there to become a monthly sustainer if you can't give big right now over a period of time determined by you we greatly need monthly sustainers because if we have an idea what's coming in the next month we are then able to plan ahead and make sure we have enough material aid and Bibles on hand in time to go into these areas so that we can be effective because of the supposed pandemic there are delays in getting this stuff now so we have to be able to order this stuff in advance so we are definitely looking for new members to join our monthly sustainer family and don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel, Feed My Sheep Today, so that way you don't miss out on any of the things happening with the funding coming into this ministry. So thank you all so much for your support. May God bless you all. You know, there is, it's kind of interesting, a uh, couple things, like you're, you're unloading a lot. Like I, I think about Paul seeing the third heaven and it feels like when he came back whether he woke up some people say that perhaps you know when he got stoned to death that perhaps that was the time that he went up to the third heaven because it could have been like a nanosecond but in paul being up in heaven it could have been don't know how long minutes hours days years don't know mm -hmm. but when he came back it's almost like you know what all this stuff, my genetics, my my the the fact that I'm from the tribe of Benjamin, a descendant, a a great 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 grandson of Rachel, and he's going out to not only the Gentiles but the lost tribes and all this kind of stuff. He almost counted it like, hey, all the all everything that I learned, all the accolades, all the degrees behind my name, the fact that I'm from the tribe of Benjamin, that's nothing. It's like dunk. It's nothing because now there's something bigger. There's something better. It's interesting. Yeah. Even uh, I was thinking about the other verses. Um, we're talking about uh, Philippians 3.20. Okay, we're talking about heaven. And talk about our place is in heaven. Apostle Paul says, for our conversation is in heaven. From mm -hmm. hence also, here it is. From hence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't say our place is down in a well where we look down, we look for Jesus to come up from like the Muslims yeah. do. No, yeah, you know, they're not, they're looking for the Mahadi to come out of a well if you never knew that story. <laughs> but, um, but here, no, it says here that hence, hence we also look for the Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. Yeah. Okay, he comes from heaven, and yeah. this is why First Thessalonians 4 16 17 said we are caught up to meet him in the heavens. So when we see Jesus for the first time, the yeah. Bible says we shall be like him. This yeah. takes place in the heavens. Yep. All right. Why? Yeah. Because we're a heavenly civilization. Yeah, all right. But that's when good. Jesus comes down, touches the Mount of Olives, presents himself to the Jews down here, but they all gather around him for the first time and see him for the first time walking yep. the earth. Yep. Okay. So we who are a heavenly civilization, we go up. We have yeah. to be caught up. He doesn't come down here, land on the ground. We all gather around and say, yeah, get ready. And we shoot off. No, we yeah. are, we meet him in the atmosphere of yeah. the earth. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I like it. And I think that's where some post-trippers get hung up. It's almost like for us, we get caught up in the air to meet him and to be with all those that have passed. Mm -hmm. uh, but post-trippers are like, it's like a U-turn. It's like. We go up and we do a procession. We guide him back down, but we don't go to heaven. Like they don't want to talk about the idea that there's actually people on white horses coming behind Christ, which is part of his armies and us as well, coming behind Jesus Christ to earth. They skip that part for some reason. They say, no, no, no. We're going up in the air to meet him and come back down real quick. No, that real doesn't quick. Make sense. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Here's, here's a problem with that. First of all, our gospel expires. When the Revelation 14 angel shows up, when you have the two witnesses show up and the 144,000, they are going to be preaching the kingdom gospel that got paused at the 69th week. Mm -hmm. Okay. The gospel that the 12 apostles were preaching 
Okay, that that eventually died out over 30, 40 years when they all died. That got the kingdom gospel slowly came to like a train. Had a lot of momentum, but then God put the brakes on it, slowed down, slowed down, came to a stop. Okay. So that's how the, the kingdom gospel got paused. Notice how none of us are teaching the kingdom gospel except for those that don't really know the word and don't really divide. They're teaching the kingdom gospel, which is not valid right now. The Jews rejected their Messiah. So there was a change from law to grace. From Jesus' earthly ministry that came to a pause, like I said, with the 12 apostles. And then God went through Apostle Paul and initiated the age of grace, which is what we're in right now. From Israel to the church. And then God will go back to Israel during Daniel's 70th week, where this Revelation 14 angel reinstitutes the kingdom gospel, the everlasting gospel. And what does this gospel entail? One, there is no escape. There is no rapture coming. You must endure to the end. Sound familiar? Repent. Turn away from all your sins. Walk a straight and narrow life. Earn your way into heaven. Be faithful unto death. Have your head cut off. Jesus plus your good works comes together. Now you have salvation. Keep the commandments and keep the law. And you must do good works and good deeds unto others in need. And if somehow you survive to the end of the tribulation, Jesus will weigh you in the balance and see whether or not you're worthy of entering his kingdom or you being thrown into hell. According to your works and the good deeds you've done unto others. That will be the sheep and goat judgment. You must resist the mark of the beast, which right now there is no mark of the beast instituted right now. There's only four shadows of it, but not the official mark of the beast that actually condemns you. But since they don't rightly divide, they believe we're in the tribulation now and they believe the mark of the beast is here. And like Kevin Hookman always says on Uptime, did God forget to send this Revelation 14 angel to warn everybody not to take this mark? So everything I just went over here with the last minute or two, is entailed in the everlasting gospel the kingdom gospel and these people are preaching it right now okay it's not a valid gospel not yet only the gospel of grace that we receive through faith in the finished works of jesus christ at the cross we have faith in that we have faith in his shed blood to forgive us of our sins and when we do the holy spirit comes and dwells within us rebirths our spirit saves us seals us unto the day of redemption ephesians 4 30 you know the part of the bible that these people refuse to read yeah so essentially they are preaching the gospel that is not active yet the everlasting gospel the kingdom gospel this gospel does not get instituted until after the rapture when the revelation 14 angel begins his earthly ministry alongside the two witnesses and the 144,000. Under this gospel, you are tested and you must pass the test in order to get saved. This is why it's instituted during the tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, the time of testing, according to Revelation 3, verse 10. But these people are preaching this gospel now. It's not valid yet. I'll prove it to you. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. That means the moment that Revelation 14 angel begins his ministry, crying about the mist of heaven alongside the 144,000, the two witnesses during Daniel's 70th week, when that comes to pass, then and only then will this gospel that these people are preaching today will be valid. After the age of grace comes to an end through the rapture resurrection event. This is why we're told in 2 Timothy 2.15 to rightly divide the word. So that way you won't be a workman that will be ashamed. If you go your whole life and you're preaching this everlasting gospel to everybody throughout your whole life and then you die and hopefully you don't end up in hell because you believed in the incorrect gospel, meaning you never truly believed in Jesus' works to save you, you trusted in your own works, so you never truly got saved. But let's say right before you die, maybe on your deathbed, you truly believed in the true gospel of grace. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, once saved, always saved. You go to the judgment seat of Christ, and Jesus will tell you you preached the wrong gospel because nobody really got saved from that gospel. So guess what? All that work you did, it was wood, hay, and stubble. So it gets all burned up, and you will be ashamed. 
because you taught the wrong gospel, you did not properly divide the dispensations and the instructions that were assigned to them. This is why the Bible tells us to rightly divide in 2 Timothy 2.15, so that way you won't be a workman that will be ashamed because you would have avoided preaching the wrong gospel. You will preach the gospel of grace, which is once saved, always saved for the age of grace that we are in right now. And people, when they hear this message, they're actually getting saved. Okay. Yeah. They're on the right track, yeah. but wrong gospel. You're in the right yeah. Bible, of course, but you're preaching yeah. the wrong gospel. But here's yeah. the thing. Once the kingdom gospel is reinstituted, and that's laid out um, in Revelation, for example, Revelation chapter 14, where the angel preaches the everlasting gospel, mm -hmm. the Bible said God's kingdom will have no end. So the everlasting gospel is the, his kingdom gospel. Okay, and that gospel, he says right there, Revelation chapter 14, blessed are those who die from henceforth. Okay, yep. from this day forward, not everybody that died the last 2,000 years. Okay, yep. so this angel isn't flying the midst of heaven yet. There's 144,000 in here yet. And the two witnesses aren't here yet. And trust me, none of these guys are going to be preaching the age of grace. Yeah. Okay, yep. because our apostle Paul told us if Anybody comes to you with any other gospel than what we preach to you, even if an angel from heaven yeah. comes to you preaching any other gospel, let and him be accursed. Be yeah. So he specifically calls out angels, not just because of what Muhammad saw and crap yeah. like that in the Mormons. No, Paul probably knew that that Revelation 14 angel was coming. So he had to make sure that, hey, if you guys see that angel, this gospel we're teaching right now, it's done.